Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How's it going today? Um, I'm here for more Radically Open DBT. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, Radically Open DBT was meant for people who are considered to be quote unquote over controlled, right? And so far in the videos I've put out, we've talked about a few different ways that over control can manifest itself, right? So today we're going to talk about how over controlled coping styles manifest, how they, what they look like. And, um, you know, how we can recognize when we're in an over-controlled coping style, okay? There's a lot of really cool um, examples and details here, and you might find it's like watching your autobiography, <laughs> okay? They really, the manual really covers it so well and gets a whole lot of um, good information in there. So I really want to um, capture that as well as I could for you um, so you could kind of understand it better yourself. Um, all right, give it, here it comes. Okay, a little slow sometimes. All right, so lesson seven. All right, understanding over controlled coping. All right. So, um, so basically, we're gonna gotta understand our habitual ways of coping in an over controlled style a little bit better. So, our coping styles really are kind of like habits, if, right? So, if we cope the similar way across similar situations over and over and over again it becomes a habit. We just automatically have our go-tos, you know, in terms of our coping styles, okay? Um, and for over-control, some of it is useful and some of it's not useful. It starts out as the core ability for self-control. And self-control is generally valued by society, right? There's a lot of benefits to self-control. And if you don't have self-control, you're probably getting yourself in some big trouble, right? So, Self-control could be positive because it allows us to inhibit certain emotional urges, whereas if we were to act them out, you know, it could create a problem. It, and also hold back on impulses and, and like kind of um, hold off on short-term gains for long-term gains, short-term short comfort for long-term gains, so to speak, and it helps us to achieve our goals that way, right? So there's a lot of benefits. And sometimes, therefore, our, our self-control is reinforced and it does work out. But if it becomes too much of a habit or too extreme, the problem is our over control gets out of control, right? And it becomes too much and that in itself starts to create problems for us, okay? So the idea is like a lot of different things. We have to moderate it a little bit better, okay? Um, so the idea in this video is that we're gonna talk about how over controlled coping patterns happen so we can become more aware of them. And once we're more aware of them, we can make other choices about how to cope. Okay, so that's the, the goal for today. Um, so there's a five step process. Okay, so the first step, as usual, is you got to start by figuring out what the cue or the trigger was that led me to start this over controlled coping pattern today. Okay, so think about maybe a recent example of a time when um, these cues happen. So you could kind of keep it in your mind as we go forward. All right, so one of the most typical um, triggers is feeling vulnerable okay see that that bird in the picture he feels like he's in the spotlight right he's kind of surrounded and everyone's looking at him and watching his every move and he feels very exposed right and that's such an uncomfortable uncertain um feeling you know and um being the center of attention can be part of it um or it could be even something like making a mistake like you thought everything was going fine, and all of a sudden someone pointed out you did something wrong, and it feels like, oh my God, what did I do? I can't believe I did it. I can't believe I missed it, right? And you feel like all of a sudden very exposed and vulnerable, right? You, you thought you were doing okay, but now all of a sudden, how did I miss that, right? Um, being asked to perform, quote unquote, it's not necessarily like, come on, grab the mic, let's do karaoke. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's like, you're in a board meeting and someone asks you to talk about a project that you're working on, but you weren't prepared to do it. And now everyone's looking at you and you're expected to speak about something and you didn't prepare. Oh my God, right? So you, you know, being asked to perform when you're not ready, especially, um, could be nerve wracking, right? Um, or even entering a new situation. It could be a social situation, going to a gathering where you really don't know people, or um, even um, a new work situation or a new, um, you know, you're going on vacation somewhere new and, you know, you haven't met those people yet and you're not used to the routine, right? So sometimes that creates a feeling of vulnerability too, right? Because you don't have a set template in your mind of what this new situation is all about. You haven't gotten all the ins and outs yet. 
So it makes you feel vulnerable. All right. So see how this all kind of goes together. So think of a time where one of these might have been a trigger for you. All right. And then you keep that in mind as we go. So step two, now that you were triggered in this way, think about what your inner experience is like. All right. So what's going through your mind? What are your thoughts? You know, so let's say you were caught making a mistake and you know, you're criticized for it. So you might be thinking, well, wait, 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 wait that's not fair. They have to, uh, why did they appreciate what I did? I know it was wrong, but like, or how did I miss that? You know, maybe there's stuff going through your mind. You might have certain emotions about it. Maybe you're um, annoyed that something that you were put in the spotlight to begin with, or you're anxious about it or embarrassed or shameful, or you know, maybe um, someone else is doing better than you. And that was a trigger. And you're thinking, oh man, how did that happen? And now you're envious at the other person because they're ahead of you, right? So there's all kinds of things you could feel emotionally. Um, body sensations. Um, if you're feeling anxious about being out of control or being vulnerable or uncertain, chances are your body's reacting to that. So there might be a certain kind of tension involved, um, maybe some stiffness somewhere, maybe heart racing, maybe a knot in your stomach, right? It might depend. And it might even trigger some memories or images of things. Um, so for example, maybe it reminds you on a visceral level of something very uncomfortable that happened in the past or the near past. And so it amplifies your emotional reaction to this experience of feeling you know, out of control or feeling exposed, right? All right, so that's the inner experience. So, so first we're gonna figure out the cue, step one. Then we're gonna tune into ourselves, figure out how we're reacting to it, okay? So then based on our feelings, um, we have an urge to act on them, right? Whether we do or not. Um, so they say that people who are over-controlled most often use what they call approach coping. So they want, you wanna get to the situation, you wanna do something about it, you wanna fix it, right? Or you wanna get in with and dominate the situation in some way so you can get a handle on it. Right, so maybe I'm gonna put myself in charge, I'm gonna to try to win or be right, you know, or something to that effect. Get people to listen to me, okay? Lots of examples to come. Um, or you might engage in avoidance coping or some version of both. So if you're really put in an uncomfortable spot, you might do certain strategies to try to avoid the discomfort of it, okay? So maybe you wanna stop listening to people's feedback that's uncomfortable, or you wanna just walk away, or you wanna avoid a conflict, because you know you don't want to hear it; it's too painful. Okay, so part of you wants to fix it, part of you wants to run away from it, and there might be a little bit of both. Okay. Okay. So now step four: describe your actual over-controlled behaviors. Right. So at first you had an urge because you felt like doing something, but then you actually did something. So what did you actually do? Okay. So the step four is going to be multiple slides because I want to give you a lot of examples of how this can manifest. Okay, and again, you might really recognize yourself in a lot of these things. Um, so that's why I wanted to make it specific. Okay, so let's do the first part of approach coping. Okay, is it in terms of an action or behavior response to feeling uncomfortable, you know, out of control, so forth. So one way we might fix it is to obsessively work on solving the problem because not knowing how to fix it and leaving the problem up in the air could be very uncomfortable. Right, so let me just try to buckle down and fix this thing, okay? Work it through and, and not stop till it's fixed, okay? I'll stay up all night fixing it. Um, I might react by over-focusing on order, symmetry, or details, right? So I might have a very strong tendency toward detail processing that operates whether I'm emotional or not, and that might be starting to kick in a little bit too, right? Kind of like finding a lot of details in a document or finding things in the environment that are out of place. Um, I might try to take control of an out of control situation by trying to plan out what to do or trying to rehearse what to do. So I won't be put on the spot. So I won't be caught off guard. Okay, so that might be part of it too. Um, like a few uh, lessons ago, we talked about some trouble being spontaneous, some trouble having fun and playing, right? Because there's a lot of obsessive rehearsal and planning, right? Because it makes us feel a little bit more controlled. Um, we might also push ourselves really hard and not allow ourselves to rest until something's finished, right? Because leaving something unfinished can feel triggering, all right? So for example, you might work late into a night, into the night to finish something on your to-do list because you don't wanna to go to sleep and worry about it, 
right? So you just keep working, 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 even if you're tired, just because leaving it undone feels too uncomfortable, okay? You might similarly like feel compelled to answer every email in your work email box before you can relax, okay? Because you don't wanna, what if I miss something, right? Vulnerable. Um, anorexia is also one of the over-controlled behaviors um, that gets addressed with this treatment. So let's say you had um, an eating issue, right? And you know you realize you gained three pounds and that's a really big deal to you, you know? And you're so anxious about it because that makes you, getting fat makes you feel out of control. So now you do everything possible to like starve yourself again so you can lose those three pounds and be at the weight that makes you feel comfortable because being at the wrong weight could make you feel really uncomfortable, right? Or really out of control, all right? Okay, so here's some examples of approach coping that has to do with interpersonal fixing, right? So the first one was kind of like fixing myself. The other one now is like, now I'm trying to take charge of other people. <laughs> what can make us feel more out of control than other people, right? And while we try to control other people, it's almost impossible. I mean, it's really hard to just make decisions for ourselves, but it's even harder to try to control others. But it doesn't stop us from trying sometimes, right? Um, so for example, um, you know, you might end up trying to fix other people's work. You know, you may not like the way they did it, so you redo it yourself, right? You don't like the way your husband stacked the dishwasher, so you undo it and fix it, right? Because having things out of place and messy is triggering for you, right? Compulsively caretaking others, right? Not trusting someone to do what they have to do on their own, so you kind of over control them. Because there's a fine line between caring and controlling, right? So if you care too much, you're controlling too much, but it's to kind of keep another person, you know, in, in, operating in a way that's more in control for you, right? More in line of how you think they should be acting. Um, over apologizing, right? Because the fear is if I don't apologize enough and the person thinks I did something wrong or is mad at me, that's a much more uncomfortable situation that if I try to put a cap on it by overly apologizing, even if I don't need to, because at least then they won't be mad at me and I don't have to worry about their reaction and worrying about their action makes me feel very out of control, okay? Other times, interpersonally, I might do things like attend social gatherings just because I'm supposed to, not because I think I'm gonna have fun, right? Ever get invited to something and you don't really wanna go, but you feel like I really probably should go because it would look bad if I didn't go, you know, like, Oh, my boss's daughter's baby shower. Oh, I don't really want to go to that, but I guess I'll go, <laughs> right? Um, so sometimes it's like we're trudging through just to save face so no one thinks negative of us, right? And having people judge us is an out-of-control situation. Okay, oh, let's move this again. All right, so approach coping. Um, again, right, more approach coping. So this is about dominating, controlling, or winning, right, in order to be in control of a situation that feels out of control, right? Because if other people are the ones who are on top, if they're making the decisions, if they're the ones getting the limelight, then it feels like it's diminishing me on some level. That might be my take on it. Or if they're deciding things and it's not the way I like it, that feels really uncomfortable and out of control. So I could pretend that I'm confident in order to correct or control a situation. Confident or correct in order to control a situation. Right? So if I think people are going to listen to me because I'm, I'm correct, that put, gives the power back to me. Right? So I'm the one making the decisions. Sometimes I can insist that there's only way, one way to do something and it's my way. So we all should be doing it my way. Right? Because I, I'm very uncomfortable doing it someone else's way that I don't know is necessarily the best way. Right? Okay. I might put the other person on the defensive by answering a question with a question. Right, so if someone putting me on the defensive, I might deflect now, right? I don't want them questioning me and making me feel like I don't know what I'm talking about, so I might just uh, turn it back around, right? Um, or I might do it by finding fault with the other person. Oh, you're criticizing me? Well, I'm gonna go and criticize you. And if I know what's wrong with you, then it puts me more in control. Mm. Okay, um, criticizing others who are dissimilar. Um, rarely or never giving praise to others right? Because it almost feels on some level like if I compliment somebody, it puts them on top of me or above me, right? So I don't want them to feel like they're winning because they're doing something good, so I'm not going to say anything, okay? 
um, and of course, telling others what to do or how to behave. Okay, it's fine in certain circumstances, maybe if you're a parent or a boss, but other circumstances, maybe not, right? Or maybe you're trying to tell them too many things and it's not necessarily your place to micromanage, right? Okay, more approach coping. Woo! Okay, more dominating, controlling, or winning. So you got Smithers in there from um, Simpsons. Okay, so another thing we can do, end up doing, is engaging in social comparisons. So that's kind of like in my mind, I'm trying to figure out where I stand by comparing myself to other people, or trying to figure out how I'm better than this one. Because once I know where I stand, I feel like I have more control. But if I don't know where I stand, I feel more out of control, right? Partially gossiping. So if I decide how someone is, or what they're like, or I control the narrative about that person, it makes me feel more in control, okay? Or I control what other people are thinking about something rather than letting them form their own opinions. Mm. Planning or engaging in revengeful acts, okay? So trying to diminish them through the revenge, making me feel like I, I made the decision about what's gonna happen, okay? Or how, what the outcome's gonna be here. Lying or cheating to win, okay? Sabotaging or disparaging other people's effort or efforts or work, right? Because if you might feel so threatening, that they would succeed or overshadow me, that I might take extreme measures at times to put myself on top, okay? Um, and withholding information to dominate a situation, right? So maybe I'm not telling someone something important because holding the information myself puts me in a more of a position of power than letting them know that. Okay, or maybe it's avoiding, preventing me from getting in trouble, <laughs> like by not telling them something important that's going on. Okay, all right, next. All right, so now we're finally switching to avoidance coping. Okay, so the idea is again that sometimes you feel so uncomfortable with what's going on that you just don't want to deal with it. All right, instead of trying to work it through, which could be kind of tricky and painful, I'm, I'm just trying to like get myself out of this emotional mess. Okay, so I might like shut down. I might like deny the problem if someone wants to talk to me about it or try not to think about it. Um, I might just like try to distract my attention. So I'm just, it's, I'm trying to put it out of my mind, right? Instead of trying to work it through, which I sometimes might need to do. I might walk away from the person or the problem. You know, sometimes you may even walk out on somebody in the middle of a conversation just because you had enough. Um, and sometimes that's appropriate and sometimes it's like a little extreme, right? Depending. Um, if someone's talking to you, you try to ignore or not listen to unwanted feedback, okay? Um, there's a whole other thing in Radically Open DBT about feedback, okay? So we'll get to that more later, but sometimes we need to hear feedback in order to learn, even if we don't like the way it was delivered, right? But it's painful to hear it sometimes, so we try to block it. We might change the topic. Um, if we're feeling uncomfortable, we might try to suppress the emotions we're feeling. So we can use distraction even for our own emotions or just try to not think about it or shove it away, right? Um, avoiding the limelight because the limelight can make us uncomfortable. Blaming others or the world for your emotions or reaction, okay? So now, instead of allowing myself to feel what's going on or tend to myself and my own reactions, I'm deflecting it outwardly by pointing a finger at others. Okay, so that's kind of like avoidance of me looking at my own role in the issue. Um, relatedly, insisting it's not my responsibility, right? So another way of kind of deflecting away from me. Or maybe insisting that situation's impossible to deal with. Like, oh, forget it, I, there's nothing I can do anyway, right? So instead of staying engaged, trying to work it through, you're just kind of like, bah, forget it, okay? It's too hard, no one's gonna be able to do this, okay. All right, so now avoidance coping in interpersonal situations. So I picked a picture of a couple because um, in a pursuer distancer relationship, chances are you might be the distancer. So things get emotionally hot and it gets really uncomfortable and you may wanna like pull away from the situation, right? Other people's emotions might really, oh, I just, I just wanna not talk about it, <laughs> right? So you might end up giving someone the silent treatment or stonewalling the person, um, kind of pulling away and maybe isolating yourself. Um, you might avoid apologizing because apologizing makes you feel like you were wrong and that feels really uncomfortable. That could be a vulnerable situation. Um, if someone's trying to help you, you may not block offers of help because that makes you feel vulnerable. Like if I can't do it myself, what's wrong with me, right? 
Um, or sometimes instead of trying to work through a relationship, you just leave the relationship, right? I read a line in a book once and the woman wrote, I knew how to end things, but I didn't know how to fix things, right? And that's kind of what they're talking about here, right? I, I, I don't, it's, it's very painful to try to work it through and fix it. I'm not sure I'm up for it, so I'm just gonna leave, okay? All right, more avoidance coping. So the theme for this one, I'll call it the inner outer mismatch or being quote unquote inauthentic, okay? So expressing how you really feel to a person can be a very challenging thing to do, right? First, you have to tune into yourself and realize what you're feeling. And then you have to take the risk of sharing it, knowing they may or may not respect what you have to say or validate you, right? And so that's also a vulnerable situation. So sometimes it's much easier to like pretend things are okay on the outside when you're inwardly suffering, right? So all these examples here have to do with that, right? So instead of sharing what you're really experiencing, you're trying to put on a different face, okay? So like the girl in the picture, she's crying, but it says, I'm fine, <laughs> okay? It's much easier sometimes to say I'm fine than to really communicate and explain how you feel. So what does this look like? It can look like physically like going flat faced. So trying not to show the emotion on your face and masking your inner feelings. Um, even on a positive sense, it could be downplaying your successes or blocking compliments. Maybe, you know, if someone points out something good you did, you're afraid they're gonna think you're bragging or something and that's uncomfortable. So you just kind of, oh, no, no, it was nothing, right? But you really wanna take in the compliment. So you might desire appreciation, but not ask for it or not accept it. Um, sometimes you pretend everything's okay when it's not. You say yes, but you're thinking no. You're agreeing, but you're really disagreeing, right? You're cooperating, but you really don't want to. <laughs> you really want to sabotage, maybe. Um, you might smile even though you're angry because you're afraid to express your anger. You might get passive aggressive because it's hard to express the anger directly. Um, you might pretend to be concerned about something, but you really don't care. You're not concerned. Um, or you're insisting that things are the same as they always were. Everything's fine, but they actually are changed. Right? So these are just some examples of like an inner outer mismatch. So you're avoiding the true expression. Okay, more avoidance coping. So this one, um, we'll call it beating ourselves up. So instead of um, being with ourselves and how we feel and working it through, um, we kind of, it's kind of like instead of blaming outwardly, we're blaming inwardly. Right? So we're kind of neglecting ourselves by doing this because we're not tending to our emotions. We're just punishing our emotions or punishing our experience. So what does this look like? It can mean depriving ourself. Um, so I'm just going to keep working, working, working until I get it done without taking care of myself. It can mean starving myself if I'm anorexic or on a diet. Me punishing myself, even like the way I'm talking to myself could be punishing. So negative self-talk, or it could be engaging in self-harm. Right? I could physically punish myself by engaging in self-harm. Or it could be fantasies about harming myself or killing myself with suicidal thoughts. Okay? So this could be part of it too. But the avoidance is avoidance of the real emotion. So it's just punishment layered on top of the emotion. Okay, so we made it to step five, <laughs> believe it or not. We, we made it. Okay. So um, now that you've coped in one of those many, many ways, whether it was approach or avoidance, okay, or multiple ways. What were the consequences, okay? Did it work out or was it a problem or a little bit of both, okay? So on the positive side, as I mentioned in the very beginning, sometimes over-controlled coping or, you know, self-control is rewarded, right? Certain strategies do work out sometimes, okay? So it might actually have helped you this time to achieve a goal or prevent a problem or perform or whatever, right? And if you were engaging in avoidance coping, you know, the way you avoided your emotions might lead, to, lead you to feel a little relief, right? Or maybe if you temporarily dominate a situation with approach coping, it leads you to have a little bit of relief, okay? But sometimes in the long term, it's not always the best, right? So if you're doing this all the time, you might be getting too perfectionistic, okay? And you're always trying to control things, you're always trying to be perfect, and it takes a lot of energy. It depletes you of your energy. Um, you're trying so hard all the time because you're so afraid of the uncertainty. And it's, it's exhausting. Um, so that's one of the disadvantages of that. And if you're constantly seeing mistakes, it's hard to appreciate the good. You're only seeing 
the flaws and the negatives in yourself and others and the work you're doing, right? And that could be hard too, right? Because it's not balanced out by seeing the good or appreciating things. Um, and also interpersonally, your over-controlled style can create problems with other people, whether it's in your personal life, your work life, your school life, right? So if you're, you're treating people where you're trying to be right all the time, you're trying to dominate them, you're trying to tell them what to do, or you're even getting duplicitous and lying and things like that, like it damages relationships. Um, even avoidance, right? Like not being willing to talk to someone about a problem because it's painful for you might damage a relationship because the person wants you to work through it with them, okay? So there's a lot of interpersonal implications of this. So just to keep that in mind, okay? And allow it to motivate you to find other ways of coping. And, and we will talk about that in this, um, you know, readily open DBT. Okay, but um, I just wanted to share with you, um, this is a diagram that's in the manual uh, that I did a screenshot of. So it kind of sums up the process we were talking about, all right? So first um, on the left, they talk about, you know, the cues, right? So if you were to fill this out, you'd write the cues over there. Then it leads to your unwanted or disliked private experience. So the thoughts, the feelings, the memories, and so forth, body sensations. And based on that, you engage in an over-controlled coping strategy, which is on the right, okay? So whatever that meant for you. And then if you look on the bottom, there were consequences. And those consequences lead you to have more internal experiences. So there might be emotions you feel in relation to those consequences, okay? And then the feelings you get generated from that could lead to more over-controlled coping. So it could create a cycle, okay? So this is just another way to visualize that scenario. Okay, and so I'm gonna end on an example, okay? Because this is a lot of data to get straight in your mind, okay? All right, so here's an example. So step one, cues or triggers. So I saw a document at work that was written poorly in my estimation. So I rewrote it to make it better, okay? So I sent it to my boss, thinking I'm doing a great thing, right? Look what I did voluntarily. I tried to fix it, I made it better for us, right? I'm gonna be the hero, <laughs> you know? And I had all these expectations about, you know, this is gonna be great, right? Look what I tried to do. I'm gonna get attention, I'm gonna get affirmation. And then I get an email back and the boss says, Nah, you know, I really wanted to stay the way it was. Bam, like a slap across the face, right? So my inner experience is like anger, humiliation, rejection, my heart's racing, my face is flushed. I can't believe this thing, right? I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, well, what's the matter with this guy? Like, why wouldn't he want something better when it could be better? Well, why would he want something to stay in a bad quality, right? But meanwhile, I'm also probably feeling like, a little embarrassed because I, I took the step to do this thing and now I was rejected, right? So it's lots of stuff going through my mind. So based on this, I have some action urges. So my approach coping urge might be to try to dominate and win this situation, like prove that I'm right <laughs> with what I tried to do, right? Or I might have some avoidance coping um, to try to further de-escalate the situation so I don't get further criticized and stuff like that, right? Or try to make it go away now that it's now that I'm feeling bad. So what am I actually doing? So here's some things that I might do in a situation like this. So maybe I'm gonna write back to my boss and defend and explain myself, trying to show like, no, I was right with what I was trying to write here, you know? Um, maybe attack and criticize the original document and explain why I did it over, right? And maybe attack also the person who wrote it, probably a dumb dumb anyway, right? Um, I might try to push my agenda, okay? Things like that, okay? Which might work or might be a little too much, depending. I could also, if I'm feeling vulnerable about being attacked by my boss or what I did, I might like avoid looking at my emails for a little while. Maybe if I see an email pop up from my boss's name, I'm afraid to read it because I don't wanna get criticized again, right? Um, so that could be part of my avoidance strategy. And then the consequences might be, of course it could be different things, but let's say here, you know, I wrote back, I tried to defend myself, tried to explain, but in the end, maybe I didn't change my boss's mind. And now, you know, I, I was bothering him and I'm left wondering, now is my boss upset? Is he mad at me? Does he have a negative view of me? And now I have that to worry about and I'm reacting to that, okay? So this is how it could kind of backfire interpersonally at times, okay? All right, so I know this was a little long, but I want to be thorough. I want to give you all the details, okay? 
all you detail focused processors out there. All right, so I hope it gave you a little insight. Um, appreciate your listening and um, I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye guys.